Every dime is a flake. We've got basketball action at the AT&T Center. We're in San Antonio, Texas, the home of the Spurs, live on 2K Sports. It's the NBA, and it's live right here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. And checking out Utah's opening lineup. Favors and Gobert, the shot-blocking duo inside. Put out there with Shelvin Mack. And it's Hayward in at the small forward. Fires for three. And it's good. Hayward's got himself on the board with three there. And one thing about Gordon Hayward, he's an excellent playmaker for a small forward. Averaged over four assists a game after averaging over five the year before. So you've got to love a score who is also unselfish. Utah with the ball. Following the three-pointer by Tony Parker. Hayward outside. Shot clock at five. Off target from three-point range. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. Green missing again. Utah's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Hood kicks to Mack. Nice ball movement by Utah. Favors can't get it to go. And mark that one down right there. It's going to be a long time until we see him miss another one like that. Certainly not the dream start they were hoping for going one for four early. Here's Mack. Here's Hayward. And it's Hayward again missing. The drive by Green. Puts it up from 17. Again, the miss by the Spurs. And they're one of five to start this game. Just really haven't gotten into a flow offensively. Launches a three. Hood gets the bucket. Hood's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Addition out to Green. Back to Parker. It's good. It's his second basket. He's shooting two for four. He's got to be a little embarrassed for joining the paratroopers club on that pump fake. Here's Hood. And the Jazz, another three. There's a chance he could have a big game if they don't D him up more tightly on the perimeter. Here's Aldridge. Rebound, Utah. Three on three. Here's Favors. Great D that time from Leonard. That's terrific defense right there to prevent from converting in close. And stolen by Hood. Here's Hayward. It's rebounded by Aldrich. No doubt it's been a bit of a struggle for him here in this quarter in terms of scoring. Tries to keep it alive. Once again off the mark by San Antonio. Gobert against Aldridge. Hayward goes in. Great touch on the 16-footer. Hayward's got five points so far. It's got to be nice for them to know that game in and game out, his offense is going to be there for him. Here's Green. Good, and Aldridge gets the assist. And he's starting to get what he wants here early and often. Nice move. Jazz leading by four. Mack dishes to Favors. He kicks to Hood. Lots of room. The shot is off. Now San Antonio takes it the other way. Parker outside. And it's Parker again missing. Been a real difficult game for him offensively, and it's cost him. The shot by Hayward wide open. And again, it's Utah. Sheldon Mack. San Antonio's gone, just one of four from three-point range here in the first. And now running it up the court, Matt pushing it up. Great D that time from Leonard. And that's the way you want to defend. Nice job there. Always important to have that good interior defense. 
Well, what a second half of the season it was for the Jazz. After the All-Star break, they went on a rampage. And the catalyst for that was the defense. I mean, very few opponents got to triple digits against the Jazz after the All-Star break. Jazz leading by four. Mack, the pass to Hayward. Pass to Mack. Shoots the three. San Antonio with the rebound. And for the Jazz and their defense post All-Star break, it helped them in their big second half run. How about a 422 field goal percentage against after the break? Leonard with the ball. Now defended by Gobert. That drops. They are really doing a nice job establishing a presence inside early. Yeah, and watch, Clark, how the game plays out because this is going to open things up on the perimeter. And the call will be against Tony Parker. That is his first foul of the game. The feet to Mac. Busts the J after the KG pass fake. And, you know, you were talking about the field goal percentage with against for the Jazz. It was the third best in the league after the All-Star break. That's field goal percentage defense. They allowed the fewest points in the NBA after the break as well. Here's Mack. Hayward's got space. They get it again. Favors. Clearly a foul. Yeah, he took a shot there. Earned those free throws. And let's quickly check out the scoring breakdown here for Utah. They've definitely had a hot hand from three-point range. Always nice to get off to a good start. Also, what passing we've seen from them here early. I mean, there could be a big number in the assist column if this keeps up. Parker with no one around. Another miss by Parker. Finished off the break. Hood's got eight points. Spurs trail by eight. Duncan kicks to green. Shot high post. Mack grabs the miss. Utah's gone three of five from three point land so far in the ballgame. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. He's jacked up a number of threes, but his accuracy has been lacking. Time to try something different if you ask me. Here's Green, and it's good off the back of the rim and in. Six points for him. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now, Greg, they've allowed from point blank range. Can't happen. Utah calls timeout. And as the coaches go to the clipboard to outline their strategy during the timeout, the players getting a chance to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's key to staying fresh all the way to the final whistle. And Kevin, it really is. And every one of these players knows it. They're all making sure to stay hydrated. It's impossible to play your A game if you're not getting enough to drink, especially uh, towards the end of games when the physical toll of a long contest really starts to add up. So it's Utah now after the basket by San Antonio. And they are shooting the lights out from distance here early. How do you stop this? I mean, it seems like they can't miss. And guys, Shelvin Mack, strong, good jump shot. More importantly, knows his role. Hasn't started that many games in his career, but maximizes his minutes when he's on the floor. Now Green after Gordon Hayward's three-pointer that didn't go. Mack dishes to Hood. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. They've been beating them to a lot of those loose balls and rebounds here to start. Yeah, the half and half balls are going their way, and that's really a function of effort and intensity. You know, the ball doesn't discriminate. Whoever goes and gets it, that's who owns it. Here's Mack. Here's Gobert. And the powerful one-handed slam. And a few more points 
tacked on to their lead and in the cruelest way possible. You're right. Yeah. Those putback jams sting, don't they? My goodness. Yeah, they really hurt you. I mean, the defense forces a miss and then can't rebound it and finish off the defense. They're hanging their heads in their chest now. I don't think they can ask much more of him than what he's done this quarter. Here's Duncan, and it's good in the assist by Parker. Duncan's got his first bucket in this one. And that assist got him a little nod from his teammate after that one. Back the best to Hayward. And the lead now, double digits on that bucket. Hayward's got a pair of threes now in the first quarter for the Jams. And the defense is in disbelief here. Triple after triple. When that happens, you simply just hope they start cooling off. Hood kicks to Mack. Favors with the screen. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Spurs will take it. That is just a careless turnover. You've got to be smarter in those exchanges. Spurs trail by 10. The drive by Green. Rebounded by Hood. Hood's got his third rebound tonight. He feeds it to Mack. A three ball. Rebound by Tony Parker. Parker's got three rebounds now in this one. And already we've got a very lopsided edge on the board for them. Yeah, plus five. As you mentioned, that didn't take very long, did it? And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? I was able to talk with Quinn Schneider for a moment. I asked him what they needed to key in on defensively, and he said, well, we've got to limit penetration by Tony Parker. He's really the, quote, head of the snake. And with his floater, he doesn't need to get all the way to the rim to score. It's crucial that we do our best to keep him outside the lane. Guys, that's no easy assignment. We'll see how much success they have defensively. Thanks, Doris. And that's going to be a turnover. They call him for eight seconds. Yeah, three turnovers so far. And the real issue is the fact that they're unforced, too careless with the basketball. Greg, they've been out of sync since the opening tip. I mean, they've got to take better care of the ball. There's the bucket. Good. Hood's got 15. He's been one of their more reliable options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this lead. Shot to stop the run. Leonard, no luck. And now Utah, fast break. Kicks to Mack. Fires the three. And he gets the bucket. He's got eight. And the offense has come together immediately. I mean, they're threatening to run away with this thing already. Greg, it's hard to imagine they'll stay this hot for four quarters. But if they even approximate that, watch out. There's a minute left to play here in the first. Down low. It's deflected. It's stolen by Duncan. Poked loose. Gobert with the block. And Hayward with a clear path to the hoop. Hood gets the bucket. Hood's got 17 now. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Dime dropping delights is what I call it. I, that is a nice pass. I will give you that one. Yeah, he was on the money, that's no doubt. Here's Mack following the basket by Tim Duncan. Hood can't get it to go. You know what? You just cannot get much better of a look than that one. Exactly. I mean, no way you expect him to miss that shot. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. Gobert, the screen. Hayward dishes to Mack. And it's off from three-point range. And a double-digit lead on the scoreboard as we end the first quarter of play. Jazz lead. Well, not exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And for the Jazz, this has been the game they've wanted to have. Right, right from the start, they have been able to really own that paint and just dominate the backboard.
Well, Greg, you can't dominate the boards unless all five guys are making the effort to box out and chase down the ball. Defense reminded Green and Leonard of the wings. Duncan out there with LaMarcus Aldridge. And it's Parker in at the one spot. So that's who San Antonio starts the second with. Boy, I tell you, I thought the Jazz had a big year last season. Looked much tougher than before. A big part of that is how Coach Quinn Snyder helped the team grow. I mean, he looked like a perfect fit in his first year with the franchise. Well, they need those kinds of plays right now. I mean, smart defense generating some offense. And really, Clark, that's the way you get yourself back into the game. Key stops and then try to get out and transition for some easy ones. The one-hand slam is so sweet when it's his hand doing the slam. Oh, yeah, he is so smooth, even on a power finish like that. And really, that's what makes him unique, that combination of power and polish. Jazz leading by 16. You were mentioning the Jazz, and they grew last year under coach Quinn Snyder in his first year. You know, Greg, he did the same thing with teams when he was a coach in the D-League. That's a great point, Kevin. And beyond the growth that the Jazz showed, I think everyone in Utah was pleased with the style of play. I mean, Coach Snyder's got the team back to playing hard defense and really grinding out wins. Hood gets the bucket. Excellent ball movement there, guys. And that's keyed this run. Passing it with purpose. The D hasn't been able to keep up. And Green gets it to go. Not much the defense can do once he gets to the bucket. Hayward right side. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. That's on LaMarcus Aldridge. And guys, as many rookies do, Rodney Hood hit some major bumps in the road last season. I mean, he came in with the reputation of having an NBA-ready jumper, yet only hit 41% of his shots. He, he had that foot injury that kept him out for a string of games. However, it really all came together for him in April, the last month of the season. And getting back to Hood over the last seven outings of the season, he put up 20-plus points a game. He also, Clark, raised his shooting percentage to 45% from the field, 91% from the free throw line. Pretty impressive numbers. Well, he was drafted to be a scorer, Kevin, and you're right. Very impressive. If he can do that consistently, that'll be nice value for the 23rd pick. Here's Parker. Drops in the breakaway layup. Parker's got 17 now. Well, I tell you what, I need to see some more assertiveness out of these defenders. They're not getting the job done. That's a great point. Ten of the last 12 points they've allowed have come at the rim. Here's Favors. It's hauled in by LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge has got his fourth rebound in this one. Here's Parker, and a pick pounds off the rim, but it sinks right in. Parker's got 19 points. Well, they really started to come on here in the second. Clark, it's about how much more focused they look offensively here. They're trying to make up some ground. His ball distribution tonight, just as good as it gets. Yeah, it sure has been. I mean, all you have to do is look at the numbers. There's no line in those totals. It's deflected. It's stolen by Green to the paint. And Aldridge gets it to go on the assist by Green. Another bucket in the paint. That's something they just have not been able to stop today. Yeah, the defense is all about disrupting timing and spacing. And, and what they've got going right now is not getting it done. And the call will be against Tony Parker. That's his fifth foul. Here is Hayward. He's got 12. Well, it looks like he's cooled down a bit after hitting those two in the first quarter. No good on the quick three. And there's the whistle on the shot. He took the foul. Shot misses. He'll be shooting two. Some good numbers for Green. He has 12 points, and he's been a good on-the-ball defender, too. He's got a pair of steals. Yeah, he's just made a lot of very heads-up plays, and his defense really has been a difference maker.
Both good from the line that time. And the Spurs being the defending champions out west heading into last year, but they went up sixth in the conference with a record of 55 and 27, had a record of 32 and 20 against the rest of the West. Spurs trail by 16 from about 16. San Antonio again missing. With the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be, firmly in control of this game. And, and no doubt about it, rebounding is an effort yes. stat, folks. They've been more determined than their opponent thus far. And yep, a couple bounces, and it falls. Green's got 16 points. Jazz leading by 16. And Mack kicks to Favors. And again, it's Utah. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. You know, the defense, Greg, has really been kept off balance because of the outstanding passes. Four straight field goals have been made off an assist. And that one's good. Now, that's how you pick up second chance points. Stay active and be ready as soon as the shot goes up. Hayward. And again, it's Utah. And the crisp passing has opened things up for them offensively. Ten straight points off assist. That's very impressive. And it also makes the game easy and fun to watch. To the wing on the left. Here's Hood. Let's it go from the baseline and nails it. Hood's got 31 points. And, and really keeping the ball hopping around here offensively. The last five trips they've had have ended with a great pass leading to a basket. They're really sharing the sugar. And Parker comes with the help. Gobert with it. Guarded now by Duncan. And now we've got the intentional foul. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. Yeah, but that's no excuse for that kind of foul. I mean, that might be an explanation for it, but certainly doesn't justify it. And even then, it's uh, just not a good play. And it's good off the back rim and in. Hood's got 33 points. Boy, they are passing the ball very crisply right now. They really are, and their last three buckets have come by way of an assist. Hayward on the wing. Puts up a three. Basket made. That gives him seven field goals in 13 tries. You know, one aspect of their play today that's really been tight and, and far superior is their passing. And that kind of flow can be elusive, but the great offenses have it, and that's just what they've shown here tonight. Jazz leading by 22. Well, at this stage, he might as well have a seat and get off the floor. They've got no chance in this one. Mills, he's checked in for Parker. The Jazz have been on target from the free throw line. They're 5 of 5 in that department. Uh, and it's been an issue for them, as it was last year. Only 72% from the line. And it's something they know that if they improve, can really have a big impact on their success. Shooting 100% in the quarter, they've... um. They made them all, taking full advantage at the line. <laughs> I tell you what, nice job making the most of their opportunities. The edge on the glass is the difference. It's allowed them to build this lead. And really a reflection of their superior effort level to this point. It seems to me... Oh! oh. He has a highlight reel unto himself, guys. Yeah, wow. that, that could very well be a contender for dunk of the year and perhaps might make its way all over the Internet. Uh, I'll tell you what, that is the crowd pleaser of all crowd pleasers. Hood gets the bucket. That's his fifth three-pointer of the half, filling it up. They need this. The shot is off. And it's Utah the other way. And one thing that everybody loves about Coach Pop is his frankness. You get a taste of it in interviews, but he's as honest and straightforward with you as he is with anybody else. 
Green inside the three-point line. Again, the miss by the Spurs. In the corner, it's Hayward. And Utah again with the bucket. Yes, and the lead should be safe if they can keep shooting the basketball like this. Yeah, they're cracking. Absolutely cracking and looking to pad that lead. Well, you've got Greg Popovich, and I think he puts this at times grumpy demeanor in, in, a, in a more of a spotlight. He's playing along, as we all know, with the sideline reporters. He knows, uh, Greg, you know this firsthand, when to turn it on, when to turn it off. He can be as compassionate a person, uh, Clark, that you and I have ever been around. Yeah, he's competitive, but he understands that we're all human, and he treats people the right way all the time. That one goes. Count it. And how about that? for a response. Well, it sounded as though, or at least it looked as though it sounded like, we'll give you a three, and then we'll take it right back. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will take it. Clark, one thing we've seen from these guys is excellent ball movement. And you love to see that, Kevin. I mean, I love watching unselfish play, and I know Greg enjoys that, too. No doubt about it. It's fun to watch the way they're operating as a team right now. They are all in sync. And stolen by Hayward. And Mack kicks the favors. Here's Hood. Offensive rebound. I didn't see that miss coming. I mean, he's usually been money from that range. Green. And that one goes long. Fast break. Here they come. Here's Hayward. And the dunk to finish it off. A uh, beauty. Excellent work there in transition. Yeah, I think it's always better to go early in transition, to attack when it's there. Because oftentimes you can beat the defense down the floor. They have constantly shot themselves in the foot this quarter with all of these turnovers. Very simple. You can't score if you can't maintain possession. Task to Hood. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Hood's got 41. Three consecutive baskets have come right at the rim. The defense had better start buckling down and tightening up. Guys, they are getting exposed in terms of their low Shooting post defense. San Antonio, Patty Mills. And guys, every time we think Patty two. Mills is going to take the next step in his development, he takes a step back. Last season, he shot career lows from the field and behind the arc after having one of his best ever campaigns the year before. That really just makes a coach pull his hair out. And fortunately for me, I don't have any. He doesn't get the second one. Well, back to Mills. The Spurs could have used his contributions last year. Parker was hobbled. Corey Joseph was still learning. Mills didn't put together consistent efforts and ended up losing minutes. Clark, because of it. Yeah, you know, Mills had the opportunity to make an impact for a championship contender. That chance doesn't come very often. Unfortunately, he couldn't make the most of it. Uncovered. And good. He got the English that time as it falls. He's finding all kinds of ways to get it done. What a quarter he's having. There's Green with the three. And that one's good. Green's got 19 points. This quarter has brought out the best in him, fellas. Even though they're still trailing, he's been impossible to contain. Mack, the best to Hood. The 11-footer. Lamarcus Aldridge grabs the miss. And uh, San Antonio shooting at an even 50% from the floor here in the second quarter. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will take it. Jazz ball. I tell you what, he clearly had a brain freeze uh, on that one. You might just as well keep going straight to the bench. Here's Mack. Nine points in the game so far. Outside favors. The pass to Hood. Here's Mack. Favors. The follow-up champ. And not a great start for him in the first, but he's quickly starting to turn it around. The Spurs shooting at 44%. Pretty reasonable. Leonard dishes to Mills. That's good, and it's Leonard with the assist. Leonard's 
got three assists in the game. And Mack kicks to Hayward. Off target with his three. Boy, they're fortunate. The defense was taking a big chance leaving him that wide open behind the arc. Here's Green. Lays it in without an inch of room around him. Green's got 21 in the game. And really, the scoring this quarter has been just off the charts, doing all he can to bring them back. Back the pass to Favors. Here's Hood. They get the rebound. With the putback. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Six points for Rudy Gobert. Hard work and soft hands, guys. That's what made that play possible. No simple offensive rebound there. Going for the tip-in. Yeah, and that's what happens, though, when you do your work early in terms of getting the good position. On its way from Hayward for two. That misses. Would have counted had it gone in. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. It's the Jazz running away with this one. Live from the AT&T Center in San Antonio, you're watching 2K Sports. And now, your Spurs And as we welcome you back, we begin our second half. So far, not a tightly contested game, guys, but you know, anything can happen. Without question, Rodney Hood displaying his skills today. That slasher mentality was on display in that first half. He got to the rim consistently. Boy, I tell you what, he's got that great first step, and he must have had some quickness porridge or something because he looks a little faster today than normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Without question, Rodney Hood displaying his skills today. I, I know we've said this many times before, but what a great first half. Rodney. Just an offensive juggernaut. And, you know, in the end, I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about what a great second half he had, guys. I mean, he can usually keep it going for all four quarters. Checking out the group for Quinn Snyder to start the second half. The forwards are Hayward in favors. Shelvin Mack is out there with Hood. And it's Gobert in it's the pivot spot, manning the middle. And he gets it to go. Almost uncontested. I mean, it's nice to be able to add to the lead without having to really work for it. And they get it back. Well, they've been better than good on the glass today. There's a glaring discrepancy between these teams in that area of the game. And it's been the difference. That's what's enabled them to build such a big lead, no doubt about it. And that's sort of been the story here today, hasn't it? And we all know Utah is a very young team. Last year, only the 76ers were younger. Still very competitive given the age and the lack of experience from this group. And the shot is good. That would be four in a row for them now as they have come racing out of the gate to start this second half. Hayward dishes to Gobert. Here's Mack. Off the left rim and out. But only the first miss of the second half. They've come out here with authority. Leonard, no luck. You know, they don't score on that shot, but they're going to be happy with those kinds of possessions. And Gobert kicks to Hayward. Here's Mack. Rebound San Antonio. Mills has got his fourth rebound in this one. Green inside the three-point line. He trains the quick shot. Green's got four points this quarter. The Jazz have gone four of seven to get things started here in the second half. Hayward outside. Favors passes to Mack. Six to shoot. Hayward from outside. And still looking for his first triple of the second half. He had three at halftime. 
and it's Green missing. Utah's gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Hood can't get it to go. And good defense there uh, to play up and get a hand in the face. Well, he's got a tough mindset. He's confident as a defender. And when you combine those two things, it makes it real hard to score on him. Out to the right wing. Gets the jumper from the corner to fall. Hood's got 45 points. It's just hard to believe that someone can perform at such a high level. They've got to thank him for this lead. He is just really almost playing for the other team. The shooting has just been poor. Passes to Mack. Fires from deep. Mills with the rebound. Mills has got his sixth rebound on the night. Let's it fly from 18. Once again off the mark by San Antonio. Favors with the screen. Hood dishes to Mack. For three, Hayward. And that one's good. Hayward's got 36. You, you, how can you forget about him? I mean, he's not going to miss that open of a look. And out of bounds as the Jazz gain possession. For Utah, they've gotten six of their 12 shots to drop for him here in the second half so far. Duncan brings the double team. And Gobert kicks to Hood. Again, the Jazz score. Strong work for him at the offensive end, helping them to maintain that lead. Clark, some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, they need a basket just to regain some momentum here, Kevin. Out to the wing. Wide open. The basket good off the assist from Hayward. Hood's got 49 points in the game. And here's Mills from the arc. That's good. Oh, he's giving himself a chance. Six shots he's gotten up this quarter, but only able to convert on one of them. And in an era where so many guys take the money and run, Gordon Hayward did the best he could to yes, live yes. up to his new contract. Shelton Clark, Mack. last year, a four-year max deal signed heading into last season. Yeah, and the way con max contracts work Damn. nowadays, even the upper mid-tier guys are getting them. A trend that will probably continue, at least in the near future. I don't like it, though. There are only, some, there are only a small number of guys that are Three. really max contract players in the NBA. Plenty of space. Hood can't get it to go. San Antonio's gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Man showing some terrific range. Mills has got a pair of threes now here in the third for San Antonio. And when you get back to Hayward, last year his points per game were way up. But, but really impressive, his shooting percentage. But really impressive. His shooting percentages were way, way up. That's a big step forward, I believe, in his development. Hits the jumper in space. Hayward's got 38 points. He's having quite the quarter here, guys. I mean, shooting the ball extremely well. And here's Mills from the arc. Here's Aldridge. Banked in off the glass. Aldridge has got six. The defense just gets caught standing around that time and giving up the second chance opportunity. You know, that just can't happen. They need much more effort than that on the glass. And Patrick Mills gets that whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. Dishes to Hayward. And yes, sir, that one drops. Hayward's got 13 points in the second half. You know, on the topic of whether Hayward is a true max prospect, he did some things last year to at least argue that he is. He was stronger, a lot more aggressive going to the rim. His defense improved, too. He'll need another year of development like that to silence the doubters. And this collapse we've seen by their interior defense, it's really the reason why they've struggled and are in such a hole. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. 
It's not really a surprise at this point, but the Spurs were in the playoffs last year. 18th consecutive appearance. Yeah, they weren't in that usual top three spot, though. Although, had they won the last game, instead of being the sixth, they would have been the second. Right. Didn't have that home court advantage. And as they went up against the Clippers, it really cost them in that seventh game. That one falls, so he hits both of them. And against the Clippers, the Spurs didn't have home court advantage. I mean, ended up playing a big part in that series. They ended up losing in Game 7 in Staples with some questionable timekeeping, but that's not why they lost. The Spurs shoot 35% or so in the third quarter. Whatever they're trying is not working. Green inside the three-point line. No good and tight defense there. Bothered that shot. Feeds to Mills. Good, and Aldridge gets the assist. Mills has got 10 points in the quarter. <laughs> wow, risky shot there size-wise, but the incredible skill that he possesses allows that one to go. Well, the quick high release negated any height disadvantage he had right there. Hood can't get it to go. And that Spurs series sure didn't feel like a first-round matchup. I mean, you could have easily have seen either team playing for the title, regardless of who won the series. Both teams acknowledged that it felt like a conference finals matchup. Derek Favors has been all sorts of trouble for him. 11 rebounds, and there's a nice number in his assist column as well. He, it really has been, Clark. He's created a lot of open looks for his teammates. Very unselfish play from him today. You know, as I watched Derek Favors last season, he continued to develop his offense. He was a big, unpolished athlete coming into the league, had some conditioning problems, but now it seems like he's on track to be a force as a power forward. So he gets them both. Talking about Derek Favors, his points per game average went up last season as it is done in each of his six seasons in the league. He's a, an ascending player. He has, you know, definitely refined his moves down on the blocks, and, and he's also become much improved at passing out of the double team, averaging a career high in assist last season as well. The, the arrow is certainly pointing up for Mr. Favors. The three from Mills. The rebound by the Jazz. It would have been something to see if he could hit that shot from that deep. Greg, you know it. I know it. There aren't very many guys that can hit from out there. But he is one of them. That's the kind of range he has. Here's Green. Utah with the rebound. Gobert's got his 16th rebound on the night. And we have an intentional foul there, G.A. Uh, wish I could say why. <laughs> that one's pretty strange. I mean, no idea what got into his head right there. Hayward goes in. Banked in off the glass. Hayward's got 17 now, just in the second half. And he's really made the most of his opportunities today. I mean, he needs to keep working for those kinds of looks. And there's the eight-second call as they can't get it across half-court in time. Here's Hood. Non-stop scoring machine here. Inside. And Gordon Hayward again. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and attacking the paint. That's an area they have completely dominated. Well, once they recognized the advantage they had inside, it made a lot of sense just to continue to attack that area. One of the reasons they're behind is because we haven't seen enough of that. He needs to become a bigger part of the offense. To the inside. And it's sent back by Aldridge. Leonard attacking. They swipe it. And Mack kicks to Favors. That's all good, and that's his fifth basket of the game. He's shooting five for 11 now. And now we'll get a perspective here on the hustle game, how it's been going for the Jazz. Boy, they're hounding, harassing effort at the defensive end. Very impressive. And they forced quite a few turnovers as a result. And the other thing they've done since the beginning of this game is score points off turnovers and in bunches. 
He's really picked up where he left off in the first. Here's Duncan. And it's good off the back of the rim and in. Duncan's got six. The dish to Hood. Beyond the arc. They get it back. And so much for repeating the three-point barrage he put on in the first half. Nothing here in the second. Oh, it's been a turbulent quarter, really rough for him. Nothing going his way, but he seems determined to shoot his way out of it. Excellent work there in transition. Yeah, I think it's always better to go early in transition, to attack when it's there, because oftentimes you can beat the defense down the floor. Pass to Hayward. No one near him. Here's Gobert. No good. Nice D from Aldridge. And Clark, they've been a little too casual with the ball out there. Yeah, I think so. Too cool. I mean, just not forceful enough, not alert or aggressive enough, and sometimes trying to do too much with the basketball. Yeah, but you can't force that square peg into the round hole. Oftentimes, you just got to make that first simple pass and get a rhythm from that. Utah's going to less than productive two of six from three-point land in the second half. And Mack kicks to Favors. And he caught that pass in full stride on his way to the big slam. That is some real serious dime dropping there. Exquisite assist. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. That one goes. Counting. Green's got ten points in the quarter. Despite the play of the team, I think he's had an outstanding game. He's really done well here. And Patrick Mills gets that whistle that time. That's his third foul of the game. Fifteen seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Hayward goes in. And he lays it straight in. Hayward's got 53. Six seconds left here in the third quarter. Duncan outside. Here's Aldridge. And as we conclude the... And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. Defensive-minded Green and Leonard are the wings. Aldridge out there with Duncan. And it's Mills in at the point. That's the San Antonio five. Hayward with the ball. Leonard picks him up. And he's going to get whistled for that foul, G. That was intentional, but not exactly <laughs> logical. <laughs> How about pointless to foul there? I mean, I don't know where his head is, but it's not in the game. To the middle. And it's Hayward. That time on the assist from Favors. Hayward's got 55. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. Jasmine. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. Mack, the pass to Favors. Good. You know, that's a case there, Kevin, of him making a pass to a spot, and then he let his teammate run right into it. Well executed. Here's Green, and Derek Favors pulls it down. Favors has got 11 rebounds in the game. Hood dishes to Mack, the 10-footer. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. And that's a double-double for him now. 11 points and 34 assists. And now he's starting to get it going. Four three-pointers in the game for him, and three have come in this half. Hood. And he can't answer back the three-pointer offline. Here's Green. Rebounded by the Jazz. Favors with the screen. Hayward on the wing. And Utah again with the bucket. Just over a minute and a half played here in the fourth. And Mills kicks to Green. The wing jumper off target. Wow, what a rough second half for him shooting the basketball. Maybe you adopt a, a pass-first mentality at this point. And he gets the bucket. Hayward's got 59 points. 
and I like that they're not settling. Getting the ball on the interior, eight of their last ten coming that way. Sometimes you just got to man up and take a tough foul in order to stop these free runs to the rim. Jazz passing it around. Mack, no luck. This shot's just, it's not there right now with this team leading. Perhaps, you know, let's focus on some other areas of the game. The Jazz have gone 5 of 8 shooting as we've come down the home stretch in this final quarter. All alone. And then Favors with the dunk. Kevin, I tell you what, when he gets to the rim like that, he's really hard to stop. Yeah, he can get up a, a few notches higher, there's no doubt. <laughs> and, and that's how the game is played on the inside. You can play over the top. You've got a great advantage. For three, Hayward. Shot is no good. Now San Antonio takes it the other way. Left side, Leonard. He dishes it to Aldridge. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. And for LaMarcus Aldridge, always praised for his terrific shooting. His rebounding, as we know, Greg, has always been fantastic. Over the past two seasons, he's averaged double-digit boards. And that's why so many teams wanted him in this last free agency period. His ability to put points on the board as well as clean the boards. What a deadly combination. And so he makes both from the line. You know, on the topic of Aldridge's rebounding, I mean, he doesn't do it by banging people around. He does it with positioning, timing, and length. And you can say that about most of his game. Quietly, effective, and impactful. Here's Hood. The three-pointer no good. Boy, with an open look like that, he is so gifted. Man, you've got to play better defense. Eventually, he's going to make you pay. Yeah, you can see he's still in rhythm, even though he misses that one almost always deadly when he's that open. And guys, going back to Aldridge, last season was a difficult one for him. He had the torn ligament in his left thumb, but still fought through it to become the Blazers' all-time leader in rebound. Wow, a fantastic performance from the arc here in the second half. Gobert, the screen. Off the pick. Hood gets the bucket. Hood's got 55. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of it. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge, Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. He's lost it in this quarter, no doubt about it. Nothing seems to be going for him. Fires the three. Rebound San Antonio. Aldridge has got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. And it's Green missing. And, and offensively, he has been a liability more than he's helped this quarter. Hayward. Here's Hood. The basket good off the assist from Hayward. Hayward's got six assists now in the game. The drive by Green. And a big pounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. Green's got 14 points now in the second half. The feet to Hood. It's rebounded by Aldridge. San Antonio's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them a fall. And Leonard gets it to go. Of all the guys you want to leave open out on the perimeter, he is the absolute last guy on the list. Attention to detail. Know your personnel. And that's exactly how they've gotten the lead right here. Easily, he's been their most consistent performer. As simple as it gets, he's hitting everything he's looked at. Keep feeding the fire. And Hayward gets it to go on the assist from Shelvin Mack. 65 points for Gordon Hayward. Green inside the three-point line. Will not go. This is off the front iron. Out to the right wing from the baseline. Hood can't get it to go. San Antonio's gotten three of their six three-pointers to fall here in the fourth. And stolen by Hayward. He kicks it to Mack from past the arc. The rebound by the Spurs. But still, eventually, you got to feel like he'll start knocking those down again. 
the three from Mills. It's rebounded by Derek Favors. Favors got rebound number 15 here tonight. Oh, trying for it. And it's out of bounds. The Jazz is able to retain possession here. Hayward from outside. They've not had the same success from outside here in the second half that they did in the first. So it might make sense to look at going inside a little more this half. Here's Mills. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time. So he'll shoot two right here. Last season, Clark, the Spurs kept on winning as usual. They passed the Lakers, in fact, for the best winning percentage all time for a franchise. Well, some of that has to do with the struggles the Lakers had last season. But more of it is credit to the Spurs. Consistency and high quality play has been who they are and have been for two decades. He misses the free throw. And with the Spurs and their winning percentage, it's right above 60. Not bad for a team that joined the NBA back in 1977. A lot of the Spurs success guys with their winning percentage has come since the 90s. The way they are put together, who knows how high they can push that franchise winning percentage. And here's Green outside. And the shot is good. Green's got 17 points here in the second half. Knocked loose. And Mills with a clear path to the hoop. Count the bucket. Mills has got nine points now in the quarter. Jazz shooting has been fun to watch in this game. They're at 57%. Hayward right side. Wide open look. They get it back. Hood gets the bucket. Yeah, heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the basket. Mills. No good from outside. Got the defender off his feet with the pump fake, but couldn't knock it down. And Mack kicks to Favors. Hood, the pass to Gobert. He feeds it to Mack. Shot clock at six. And Hayward gets it to go. Three triples in the first half. Three in the second. Boy, do they add up. And that one's good. Green's got 40 points. He is just self-willing. His team right now doing everything he can to keep them alive. An intentional foul committed, but for what purpose, Greg? I'm not sure. A, a scene of confusion right uh -huh. there. I can't imagine why he thought it was a good idea to foul there. In the corner, it's Hayward. No good. And the Spurs going the other way now. Favors can't get it to go. And now running it up the court. Green pushing it all the way. Favors with the rebound. Almost no chance of that shot going in. Yeah, there were a lot of other places he could have gone with the basketball instead of forcing that shot. Up. Duncan with the block. And it goes out of bounds. That one off Duncan. On its way from Hayward for two. Second shot opportunity. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will retain Jazz. possession. Mack dishes to Hayward. Persistence pays off as they finally hit a shot. And no doubt about it, in order for them to be successful, he has got to be a catalyst when it comes to scoring. Aldridge, good. Just no chance for the smaller defender to block that shot. He's really, really good at using his size to free himself up for those mid-range jumpers. A master at it. <laughs> Is it me, or does it just feel like he gets every rebound that comes up? Well, he practically has gotten every one that's available. A 20-plus rebounding game is not something we get to see very often, Greg. Kicks to Hood. 
uses the glass to finish the lane. And that bucket adds to what has been a big difference in points in the paint between the two teams. Yeah, it's really been quite a contrast. I like the way they're attacking the middle um, at their offensive end. You know, he's knocking down his shots today, but it hasn't really translated to the scoreboard yet. To the left wing. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. And so he hits the technical free throw. A lot of NBA teams have been outright buying developmental league teams. I mean, the Jazz did that last season. They purchased the Idaho Stampede last March, and we see more and more of that happening, one-on-one -on -one affiliations between D-League teams and NBA teams. And Utah, another three. San Antonio's gone over and over to the three-point shot in the fourth quarter. Four of nine. What a nice feed, and that assist gives him a triple-double. That's my kind of player. Versatile as baking soda. Multi-uses, multi-dimensional. He can do it all. And oh, here we go with Green. Nobody back. Again, the Spurs, good for two. And as we head to the final buzzer here, a crushing blowout. Big-time dominance. And, and this will go in the record books as a golly win for the Jazz. Fewer miscues made the difference, Clark. Yeah, I thought the fact they minimized their turnovers was huge. It was a terrific all-around effort. And what a huge standout performance it was for Hayward. He was doing everything right, and the points came in bunches. Definitely had the hot hand. The drive by Green. Can't cash in from the high post. The Jazz shoot well here late in the game. 51% here in the fourth. Gobert, the screen. Hayward. And there's another one for the Jazz. This is a serious game-clinching run they're on. Yeah, I agree with you. Just not backing off here. I mean, they're looking to close this one out in style. What a time to have this kind of surge. Leonard brings the double team. Nice ball movement by Utah. Out to the right wing. Here's Hood. Can't get it to go. And it's the Spurs taking it the other way. Shot and game clock separated by five. Leonard attacking. Here's Green. Second chance shot. Here's Duncan. Gobert with the defensive effort. Here's Mack. And so it's Utah easily grabbing the win. To come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says, I think, Greg, an awful lot about this team. Yeah, I, I guess they don't need home cooking to feel at <laughs> home. I mean, Kevin, just a masterful performance all the way around. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and Doris Burke, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long, everyone.